I'm from the Bronx, born and raised in Harlem. Yeah. So you're a felon. What you do? And um, sold drugs. I mean, came up hard. You know, I had to support myself. Mother was a crackhead. Father was a dope fiend. You know, so I was on the streets from the age of 13. You know, I had to find my way from the age of 13. Um, caught my first case when I was 14. What was that about? Robbery. So who are you? Me, I'm Victor Martinez. Half black, half Mahano. Son of Bronx. Born and raised. That's about it. So how long you uh, been in the system? Man, I've been in the system. I did one bid. It was five. Did another bid. It was 16 months. 16, 18, a year and a half. That five, I had two bids running concurrent. I had one a third of five, one a third of four, a three and a half flat, and I caught another year while I was inside. So what you do to get in the first time for the five? Um, no, the first time it was at 18. I did a juvie, young kid. I went and did, I ran up in my neighbor house. Um, me and a few of my friends, we, you know, it's not funny, but I was a child at the time, so. So we broke into this girl house that used to beat us up. This girl used to bully us, you know. And we ended up breaking into a house and jumping her, and it just turned out. What, y'all jumped a girl? We jumped a girl, but she wasn't a girl. This chick was an Amazon chick, like monster. It's like, like bigger than big, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it took a beast four of us, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, that was my first case. And How'd y'all get caught? He got caught because while we was in the house, she was on the phone with the police in the next room. You understand? So, yeah, when we, when we left the building, the police was waiting for us, you know. So y'all stayed, y'all? <laughs> Y'all stayed in the house, yeah, the beat night. her up while she was in the room with the phone? You know, hit her mom's little piggy bank, took a little change, you know what I mean? Went outside, you know. You know, police was waiting for us, we got arrested and I went to jail. No charges was pressed. You know, I was released and, you know, that's, that was like the beginning of the cycle of me being incarcerated, um, in and out of jail. Living with my sister, yo, we was hungry. There was no food in the fridge. I had my niece. I was walking out, he was walking out. So opportunity, took it. Ran him right up in the kitchen window, boom. Went right to the bedroom. Man, go, so I stuffed in my pockets. I lifted the mattress, why I saw like $2,000 in cash? Put that right in my pocket, hold ass. Went and bought some food, came back to my sister. I put her on, boom, boom. She was like, yo, you're an idiot, whatever. She done did that, blah, blah, blah. I said, whatever, ah, they gonna catch you. I went on the run. It caught me like three months later trying to hop the train. After that, I was, you know, in and out for drugs and, you know, all sorts of trespassing and stuff like that. But my major case, which was my last one where I did a, a five year bid, um, that was like a, a cell, a narcotic cell where somebody set me up. You know, I was selling to somebody that I knew that I thought was my friend. You understand? And, and they set me up. And, you know, I was incarcerated for five years. And, you know, here I am today, you know, about 10 years later. Would you say the system benefited you? Did you feel like you came out reformed, changed, or any better off than you were before you went in? It's like 50-50, it's like you know, it, it works if you, if, you, if you work it, more or less. Like, I went in there with the intentions of coming out not to go back. So it worked for me, you know, and this is why I'm sitting in front of the camera today you know, trying to pursue something better than the streets. So, when you got out of jail for the last time, what was your thought process? How did you think you needed to change your life, if at all? Man, I, I didn't think I even wanted to change my life. Because my parents had passed away when I was 12. So basically, I've been on my own. That's what happened I went to jail for the first time. That's one of the biggest misconceptions people have about jail. Um, the biggest misconceptions are that jail is the most violent place in the world, and it's not. Hmm. It's not the most violent place. In the for some people, I mean, for me, personally, I enjoyed it. It's not a place to enjoy, but I enjoyed it because I knew how to bid. I've been doing it for so long, you come accustomed to it. When you're in and out of jail for so many times, and you come accustomed to it, so like, I can go to jail right now and be all right. I wouldn't want to, I'll be stressed, but I know how to, you know, I know how to adapt to the situation. You know, I know how to live in jail. I know what it takes to survive in jail. And jail is kind of, it might sound crazy, but jail is safer than the streets. Hmm. It's, you know, it, it really is if you look at it. Because everybody in prison, 
most of the guys got set goals already. The guys are sentenced already. They know what they want to do. They're trying to get home. You know, a lot of guys ain't in there trying to kill people, you know, stuff like that. But I think personally, from my experience, I had fun. No responsibilities. You know, three meals a day. You know, I mean, it's the way I looked at it. And it also was the way that I came up. So I, it's probably the way I came up that I enjoy being in prison. You know, I, I didn't want to be there, but I made the best of it. So you don't feel like jail made you not want to go back there? How do you feel about going back to jail if you had to? Would I go back? Yeah, I'd probably go back. Because when you go back, you don't go back by choice. You get handcuffs on you. Unless you're coming up with handcuffs, we're going out. You're going back. I don't want to go back, but you do, I do, people do things in life. Regardless, not thinking about the consequences. Okay, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna get caught. But when you get caught, then you gonna be sitting about it, y'all gonna do it. But since I've been home, I've done so much and have not gotten caught. I think about the consequences. I, I don't think about it from beginning to end. I think about it from end to beginning. I, uh, and that's how. You don't watch a bunch of criminals. You don't talk, you don't click, you don't smart, share ideas. It's a school of criminals. It makes you smart. You graduate, that's what you say. You go from DFY. Then you go to the big pool, Rikers, adolescent, then you go to Upstock, you start graduating. I graduated with flying colors. It's not a problem in the world that I don't think I can do. And you learned all that in prison? Yeah. Pretty much. Because what? At 12, got locked up at 13. I came out when I was 15. Two months later, got arrested again. I came out when I was 21. 2005, I've been out. I've been my whole life in prison. So I've been out since 2005, I made it this far with knowledge that I've learned through prison. When I came home, it was like I was born again, a baby into society. Okay, now what are you going to do? You know, you got brain, now it's just, you have no assets, you have nowhere to go, it's just yourself. What do you got to do? You take it from there. What does it take to survive in, in prison? You said you knew what you had, you had what it takes to survive. What does Be it yourself. Take? Be yourself. You know, the tough shit don't fly, you know, like me, I got a sense of humor, I'm funny, you know, and I was just being myself and that's the key. When you go into an atmosphere or into a situation being something other than yourself, it usually backfires on you. Because mm -hmm. the truth always comes out. Your true colors are always going to come out one way or another. So I always approach any situation when I meet somebody, whether it's in jail or, you know, on the street, I'm me. And I'm never going to change, you know, I'm, I'm me and that's what you're going to get. And as long as you, you, you know, you'll, you'll survive. The money gambling on fights, you're starting shit. Be bored, high, get smoke. How'd they get high in prison? Man, there's <clears throat> ways. Mm -hmm. Tell me, okay. tell me, what, what, how do you get high in prison? Take a loony, you fill that What's shit up. What's a loony? A balloon, a little waterbellum balloon. You take that shit up, you fill it up, boom, 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 boom. You take your asshole, you split that shit in half, but you jam that shit right up in there. That's how you get it in? Who gets I, it in? Not, I wouldn't do it now. You probably have your girlfriend or something. Put it on a little coochie cap. I ain't gonna... You on camera, I ain't gonna tell you how to do all this. Why you not? You ain't in it no more. <laughs> uh, I ain't gonna put, make them hot. I mean, yeah, okay, no, I ain't gonna put them hot. I feel you. Ah. So, There's ways, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, who you working for, matter of fact? Come here, let me get that camera. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Let me put it up on him. Yeah, now there's ways. Liquor, man, I used to make hooch in myself. I had like a 30 cell. Put that right in the bottom. Christmas time come around. I used to set that up on my birthday in November. Can you tell me how you make hooch in prison? What's it like wine? You know, you take some fruits, vegetables, put some potato in there for the yeast or whatever you can. You let it sit, you let it marinate, you have two liters of soda. Once that bad boy was ready to pop, it's like poison almost. Alcohol poison. That's what it is. And that's how you make it. You just let it just let it sit in your room. Just let it sit until as long as you can, cause you get searches all day long. Mm, hops and whole bunch five two liter bottles. And you break a hole in the wall. It's, it's made like wine, same way wine is made. Mm. And you just got. I used to have one five. The team was five a team. Used to have five bottles, one for each one. That shit was good. Pineapple juice, the concentrated juice, and whatever was. That shit was good. Yo, I know fine. You smoke a J. Mm. Oh man, you be like this. You come out, eyes all red, leaning. You feel like you home. Walking through the block. The only thing is you're missing is your car, your girls, your bling bling. You got clothes. You want to go shopping? You hope something to go to the next cell. What you got? If you think you're tough, you knock them out, you take your shit. Yo, I just bought some new sneakers. 
That's how jail was. Where do you feel more comfortable? Where I feel more comfortable? Either home or prison? I don't think I feel even comfortable with my own skin sometimes. But I would say each one got its pros and cons. Give me, give me them. If you were home, you always constantly got to think of this, think of that. You got bills, you got responsibilities, you popping kids. Now she's stressing you about child support, whatever the case might be. You actually have to take care of yourself. Put it like that. Yeah, they got welfare and whatever, blah, 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 but no, you actually have to take care of yourself. In prison, everything is set for you. You get what I'm saying? I can, that's how the system is, or whatever. They set the mind for, for you, and you get, you get stuck in there. You get the mentality, you get comfortable, don't? That's what you got for that. I'm still comfortable in there, but you know what? I'm free right now. I'm gonna run it to the ground until I drop dead. I sleep when I'm dead, buddy. So like I said, jail, they both got a problem. Jail and prison, I mean jail and home, whatever. Home is great, jail is whack. But once you're in there, you're in there, you try to make the best of it. That's what happens. <clears throat> Shit, you wanna go get some girls? Go down the block. <laughs> Yo, you got some girls? Yeah, slide them under the door. <laughs> A porno book. <laughs> so, uh, that's your girls. So life outside of prison, after you get out, what's the first step? Um, obtaining proper ID. That was the first thing I had to do. Because, you know, I was away for five years, so the ID I didn't have. I had to get that ID straight, social security, birth certificates, you know, picture of New York State ID. Those are like the first things for niggas that come out of jail. Like, those are the first things that you gotta get, you know, and then it's the finding a job. Well, not really, before all that, it's the girl. You know, the girl. The girl? What's the girl? Tell me about the girl. Yeah, you know, nigga come out of jail, nigga don't wanna work. Nigga really don't wanna look for a job. Nigga just wants some pussy. <laughs> so that's really the first thing a nigga do when the nigga get out. And where do you where, where do you go? Do you have a girl already? Do you have it already set up? Like what's, what's how do you get it? You, I, you know, you fresh out. You fresh out. Fresh out. When you, you fresh out the joint, you, you got a glow. You know, and it's, it's just this glow that women see. Like everybody knows the glow, and it's just a, it's like a chick magnet. It's a chick magnet. It's like a chick magnet. The glow. You, you know. But other than that, you know, the drug programs and that, um, finding work, but it, it, it wasn't easy and it, it wasn't hard, but, you know, I'm here today to talk about it, so, you know, I did something right. Now, what's the biggest struggle that felons have to go through that's different than unlike anybody else who hasn't been to prison? Employment, trying to find a job, trying to find stable work, a good paying job, because, like, that, that F on your back is like, like a big fuck you, like uh, get the fuck out of here, you fucking crazy. Like that F can mean anything when it comes to appointment to the employer, pretty much. You know, when they see that felony, they automatically assume that this guy's a criminal, he's bad, he's not, you know, he's not uh, worthy to work for us. And, you know, my whole thing is some of the best workers and the most loyal workers will be people with felonies. Not saying nothing against people that don't have felonies, but guys with felonies would appreciate it a little more because they know where they came from and they know what they're trying to get. So, you know, yeah. I mean, when you want to some funny shit, I didn't even believe it. My man came, yo, I skeeted it on the chick, on the CO chick, CO chick in the living room, in the dining in the, room, in the day room. Yeah. She's sitting there writing somebody up. I see my man, oh, you see the. <laughs> Just like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get up. Yo, all you see is mad nut on the fucking CEO butt. She ain't feel it, cause they got the protective thing. So he's like, he come back mad fast. Yo, go look. I look, all you see is I'm like, oh shit, this nigga did that shit. And shut us all down, man. CEOs came in and they kicked all our asses. When she went up to the thing, she didn't even see it. She's walking the court. Another CEO, I guess, told you, yo, you gotta come in your butt. Boy, that shit was funny. That's funny. Yo, they, yo, they came in. I had the dirty cell. They thought I did this shit just because I had the third, the back cell, dirty cell. They found me the hooch, you know. They thought I big, the big, fucking spandex cell. Yo, they found me the hooch. I was hooch. Yeah, hooch. Yeah, 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 as you move outside of Patience. Patience is like number one because you're dealing with 
a million personalities and you know the funny shit that happened to me I had a fight over a microwave over a microwave you know in prison they cook in microwaves so, you know through a house there's two microwaves you know and there's lines these guys really have lines for these microwaves and slots so you know when you're a new guy coming to the house you can't just jump in the microwave you can't you know you gotta wait your turn and you gotta wait for these people's slot times to be done and you know I came and we was like late getting out from count time you know we was 345 count and they let us out late so I ran to the kitchen real quick and I threw my shit in the microwave and this guy named Shotgun like this guy supposedly was like his name Shotgun it's self-explanatory and like he comes and he just throw my food you know out the microwave and but me being myself, you know, I didn't really take it too serious because I used to fuck with him, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of laughed at it until I seen he was serious, you know? Like, he started kicking off his slippers, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm looking at him like, you know, I got my radio on and I'm looking at him like, are you serious? Like, but I know this guy, he used to be in the gym doing karate, you know what I'm saying? One of those guys that front, you know, you got those guys that sit in the gym and act like they black belts and shit like that when they really not. They soft as motherfucking, you know what I mean? Like tissue, like and they in the gym just, you know, doing all this crazy shit like they Bruce Lee and, and can't fight for shit, you know what I mean? And that was the situation and like I whipped this nigga out, like I really whipped him out over a microwave, over food that neither one of us owned, you know, and I went to the box, he went to the box, but he ended up out of the box before me because he was in that building for a long time. So he had seniority with COs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So he was able to get out of his situation before I was, you know. But that was like the dumbest shit. So tell me how it's been for you outside of prison trying to restart your life. What's that like? An adventure. Like I said, when I first came out of prison, everything was moving too fast. The jail is slow. You can walk, there's no cars. It's cars are speeding. It's like a you're in space going how many light years and all you see is the stars going like that. That's how things was moving. The process of trying to rehabilitate myself or whatever. I didn't even know how I did it. I just took a day at a time. I wasn't even trying to rehabilitate myself or coming to I was just being me. I wanna come, I wanna smoke, I wanna drink, I wanna have some sex, I wanna get some money, I wanna go back to what I, I went back to how I was before. Just switch it up a little bit. Don't do no dumb, you know what I mean? Like I went and robbed a nigga around the corner, stuff him, boom! Next thing you know, I look up, a cop car been sitting there eating his donuts, just watching me the whole time. You know what I mean? Now you can be cautious a little bit, pick and choose and plan. <laughs> but yeah, it's been an adventure. All I do is take it one day at a time. I are try you, to have fun. Are you employed? Um, I would say I'm self-employed right now. I'm hustling. Seriously. Still out, seven years out of prison, and look at me, still hustling. Also drugs or nothing like that. I'm trying to do a little, change the game a little bit. Uh, I said water to a whale, put it like that. Am I employed? To answer that question, yeah, you're always employed. A hustle. You always gotta make money. You always gotta do something. You always. I ain't even like the word employment. I'm getting money. I'm trying to live. Put it like that. Employed, I don't want to work for nobody. I work for myself. I don't even work for myself. I work for life. I'm trying to do what I do. In my life, what I see in life is smoke weed, drink, fuck bitches. And if I could do those three, and have something set up for my kids and my baby mom, I'm good. I don't need nothing else. I need a car, fucking go to school and all that other shit. Nah, as long as I got something going, and I'm alright, then that's fine with me, man. Mm -hmm. Do you think a show like I Am Felon could help you? It could probably get me out of the mentality I am, knock some sense into me. What's some of the things you cook in, 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 in prison? Some, some, some dishes that you can only kind of find there? Um. Well, dude, Jack Mac is like number one. Jack Mac, um, fried rice. What's Jack Mac? That's mackerels, but we call it Jack Mac. How do you make that? That's um, it, it, you can make it. You can saute it. You can fry it. How the hell do you saute and fry something in prison, brother? Because everything they have in, in the street, we have access to in prison. 
all the seasonings, you know, that's out here available, there's available in prison. So you have a frying pan, oil, and, and, and a stove in no, prison? No, we don't have stoves. We have microwaves. So, so how do you... All the cooking is done through microwaves. Like, you know, we have the sassoon, we have the adobos, we have the salt, we have the peppers, we have the garlic heads. You know what I mean? We, we have everything that pretty much is used out here. Picante sauce and, you know, everything that's used out here we can use in there and you just gotta, you know, cook it in the microwave. So I guess I'm trying to get you to explain to me what's the process of preparing these, these meals in the microwave. Because the same thing you could fry or saute in a pan, you can't necessarily do the same thing in a microwave. You don't have the same element. No, you can. How? Okay, because you get, um, uh, um, what you call those papers? Those, when you're baking cookies. The, cookie the, sheets? Cookie sheet, right? You put a cookie sheet on, a, on like a little plate or a pan or something, and you sit in the microwave. No water, a little oil on whatever it is you're cooking, and you let it fry. It fries just like that. Or, you know, with the rice, same way, water, boil it in the microwave, put a lid on it. Or you just put your rice, your, your mac, your calamaries, whatever it is that they sell in the commissary that you like to eat, there's a way to make it in jail. And it's good. It tastes damn good. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Uh, if, if, what would you want to gain from experience of being in another situation where you're in a house with like-minded individuals or like-minded people in the situation? How would you think you would benefit from I am a felon? Um, I would, my, me, my whole benefit would be, you know, the whole point of giving other people chances, you know, to make, to make change in their life and, and also to give awareness to the world. You know, that, that's all the satisfaction I want. You know, it's not about the money. It's just about having my name on something and putting it out there so the world can see. You know, and that's pretty much what it's about. Like, fellas are not horrible people. And this show will, 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 will give, you know, Every, everything, you, any questions that a person have about a felony, this what this show is about. You don't need to have, you don't need no assumptions, you don't need to assume, you don't need to ask this person, you don't need this, you need to watch the show. You know, this is what this is about, you know. This is about awareness of felons. My name is Victor Martinez, and I'm a felon. My name is Amin Ross, and I am a felon.